Being poor in America, that's not very fun, is it? It certainly is not. Every day, 41 million Americans face hunger, including 13 million kids. And about 10% of our residents live in poverty. That's just really sad, considering that we're the richest country in the world. But those numbers are lower than they were a few years ago. So that's good news, right? Today, we're gonna to talk about the poorest places in America to live in 2020. We're gonna use a lot of metrics to define them. Stuff like poverty rates and jobless rates and unemployment rates and we'll even talk about a few solutions. And since we're talking about poor people, I didn't get a haircut this week to fit in. Let's begin. We're gonna start in an unlikely place, Springfield, Massachusetts. Now, people in the MA are probably like, oh yeah, Springfield's struggling, but many of the rest of you probably haven't even heard of the place. Springfield's located sort of in the southwestern part of the state. Here, nearly 23% of the population is unemployed, which is just massive. That's like Great Depression level rates, but that's nothing compared to what we'll see later. Compare Springfield to Centennial, Colorado, our richest city, where people earn, on average, about $105,000 a year. That's every household in town. That's a big difference. Springfield was also the first place a car was ever driven. Back then, they weren't very reliable. Springfieldians' cars probably aren't reliable now either. Up next, we visit the Deep South, the poorest region of our country. This is Jackson, Mississippi, our poorest state. Sure, there are way poorer people in Mississippi than in Jackson, but for the sake of name recognition, we limited our cities to the largest places in America. In Jackson, households make about 37000 a year, which is super low, but not even the lowest we're going to see. In Yazoo City, a teeny little place in the poorest region of our nation called the Mississippi Delta, households earn a paltry twenty three k a year. That's just about as low as it gets. That's poverty level for the whole place. One state over in Birmingham, Alabama, people are a teeny bit poorer. Families earn about 2000 less each year, and nearly one in three families lives in poverty. But things are getting better here in Birmingham. You may not know it, but this state's growing job-wise. The only bad part is some of the growth among go-getters is leaving the super poor far behind. And that's causing some troubling issues among this community, where you have up-and-coming parts near downtown and deplorable and dilapidated areas just a mile outside of it. People in the Deep South don't need a lot of money to be happy. That's right, Mappy. Folks in this part of our country are quite happy with going to church and fishing and hunting and spending time with family and friends. And those things cost nothing. How much money do you make, Mappy? Not much. I think you pay me. Okay, that's enough, Mappy. Thanks, Mappy. Bye, Mappy. For the first, but not last time, we're heading to upstate New York. This is Syracuse. It's hard to believe that one of our wealthiest states can have so many poor people, but it's true. Here in Syracuse, 32% of the population lives in poverty, and families earn about 36 k a year, which goes nowhere on a New York budget. Syracuse is a former Rust Belt city with tons of character and history, but those jobs left ages ago, fella, and this place never kept up. While many of our largest cities have actually lowered poverty rates, Syracuse's have gone up. As a result of this abject poverty here, crime is through the roof. Look at how many dollar stores are here. That's indicative of a population struggling to get by. Newark, New Jersey hasn't been out of the cellar financially for like ever. One of our nation's most dangerous inner cities, it's tough to get by on a meager household budget of about 35 k annually. One in six people doesn't have a J-O-B in Newark, but that's not because there aren't plenty of J-O-Bs. It's because they aren't qualified for them. Newark has plenty of insurance jobs, and there's a bunch of tech and medical jobs open too, but Newark's population isn't skilled to obtain them. Now, many people in New Jersey might think Camden is much more rundown and destitute than Newark is, but Camden folks actually make about 10 k more a year than their peers up in Newark do. So that settles that rivalry, at least financially. There's been some rags to riches story coming out of Newark. Jason Alexander from Seinfeld, rapper Ice-T, Steve Sanders from Beverly Hills 90210, and even Albert Einstein hail from this once proud city. Collectively, Connecticut is our nation's richest state, as households earn, on average, about 70 k a year. But Hartford isn't part of that, at least for the most part. The average family in Hartford earns exactly half that amount, and 30% of them are on government assistance. 
for all three categories we measured, income levels, poverty rates, and jobless rates, Hartford is in the top 10 for all of them. To make things worse, it's really expensive to live in Connecticut. Back in the late 80s, Hartford was a jam as new companies flocked here and homes were going up all over the place, but then companies left town for more favorable business climates. More and more companies leaving meant less skilled workers stuck around. Now it's a mess because everybody who stayed is unskilled. It's a trend across the whole state of Connecticut, which used to be the golden boy of New England, but no longer. Connecticuters are hopeful that one day, as more Americans flee big cities, they'll settle back into the suburbs again, and Hartford will once again be desirable. We'll see if that comeback comes one day, but that's a lot to hope for. Only about an hour and 22 minutes away from Syracuse is our other terribly poor place to live in upstate, Rochester. It's the same story here as it is over in Syracuse. Manufacturing jobs left forever ago, but more recently, there were three big companies which made up 60% of Rochester's workforce, Kodak, Xerox, and Bausch & Loam. Now, those big three make up 6% of Rochester's workforce. So the good jobs are gone. The government turnover here is slow, meaning continuous government handouts instead of plans to bring in new business growth. Plus, the weather here is horrible, making it hard to entice skilled people to move here in the first place. A GED just doesn't cut it in Rochester anymore, pal. I used to want to live in New York, but not anymore. All my girlfriends from there are leaving. You don't have any girlfriends in New York City. This is even about New York City. It's about the state of New York and two cities far away from there. I don't care what you say. I'm wearing Jessica Alba's makeup line. <laughs> okay, what does that have to do with anything? Nobody cares what kind of makeup you have on a woman. Clearly, she needs to feel important. You can't have a poor city without talking about the Midwest. And guess what? We're going to stay in the Midwest for the rest of this video. Yay! Not. We begin our Midwest poor tour in the city of Dayton, which is in western Ohio. Dayton is well known among Ohioites as being a place full of ghettos and crime. Unemployment-wise, Dayton has to have gone up since the health crisis hit in March. 42%? What the? And it's up from 62%? What the, what the, what the, what the? Dayton's unemployment rate was 62% in April? Oh my God, I had no idea. So many people in one city could be out of work. Looking back to before the whole pandemic thing, we can see Dayton was straight up struggling then at 19%, but 62%, that's just incredible. Okay, so I had to know which countries have the lowest unemployment rates so we can put this whole thing in a perspective. Okay, so Burkina Faso, an African nation, has a 77% jobless rate, followed by, well, Dayton. So Dayton's folks work less than just about every single poor nation on earth. That is a shame, people. Shame, shame, shame on you, Dayton. Sadly, there's even more poor places to live in this fine nation. One of them is just a three hours drive away in Cleveland. Of course, Cleveland's on here, come on. Families earn under 30K a year combined, which is about $2,500 a month before taxes, which means a family in Cleveland has about two grand a month to get by on. One in three officially lives in poverty, but most of this city is paycheck to paycheck. It's actually sad here. Cleveland ranks first in the nation for child poverty, second in the nation for the working poor, and third in the nation for poor seniors. Half of all kids in Cleveland lives in a household where just finding a meal is a challenge. On the bright side, there's good news for Cleveland. As jobs have kind of trickled in and the city's been working hard to improve its image and its economy, the working poor population has decreased. Meaning, for the people in Cleveland who are trying, there are pathways to get out of poverty. But Ohio is challenged in many ways. Cincinnati and Toledo barely missed our top 10. Outside of Mississippi, Ohio might be our poorest state in many regards. Just down the road is the city of Detroit, which I'm sure you've heard about endlessly. It's become the poster child for poverty and hopelessness here in America. Statistically, Cleveland and Detroit are almost the same, except there's just a few less middle-class jobs and opportunities in Detroit. One in five residents here is out of work and probably hasn't tried to get a job in like forever. 40% live in poverty and crime's terrible and everyone's leaving. Here's a quick glance at what Detroit looks like now in neighborhoods that are just a couple miles from downtown. Entire blocks here have been isolated, abandoned, and simply forgotten about. Is Detroit even trying? I mean, other former Rust Belt cities like Pittsburgh and Chicago and Milwaukee and even St. Louis have been spared of the job loss demise. 
They've all found ways to diversify their economies and stop the decline Detroit's experienced. The answer is yes, Detroit is trying. For three straight years, Detroiters have moved out of poverty. Income has grown here by 20% for the past three years, which has doubled income growth from previous periods. What are they doing? Encouraging companies to come here and helping train residents to fill the new jobs. That's what. But Detroit still has a long way to go if it wants to somewhat resemble an American city at some point down the road. Okay, so that's it. The poorest cities in America, the places in America where people don't want to work, can't find work or have jobs, but they're low paying. Let's all hope things change for these cities. The end.